नमस्कार एंड वेलकम टू दिस एक्साइटिंग न्यू एपिसोड ऑफ सप्तॉलॉजी डीबंकिंग मिथोलॉजी सप्तॉलॉजी मीन साइंस ऑफ ट्रूथ और स्टडी ऑफ ट्रूथ एंड वेरी गुड न्यूज फॉर ऑल ऑफ यू इज दैट वी आर ऑन स्पॉटिफाई राइट नाउ व्हाट 11 टॉक्स आर लाइव एंड ग्रेजुअली यू विल सी ऑल द टॉक्स विल बी लाइव ऑन YouTube विल गो ऑन स्पॉटिफाई बिफोर इट कम्स ऑन YouTube सो यू कैन लिसन देयर एज एंड इफ यू वांट टू सी अस टॉकिंग यू कैन डू दैट एज़ वेल सो please join our debunking mythology courses also and follow us on twitter subscribe to our channel turn on the notification bells and see all our content together with your family it's all family oriented programs mostly connected to spirituality and ancient history from ramayan and mahabharat i have a very special guest today and you have seen him many times so let us welcome dr raja ram mohan roy namaste aditi नमस्ते टू बी हियर अगेन सो आज आप क्या लेकर रहे हैं सीक्रेट्स बिकॉज़ यू आर ग्रेजुअली गोइंग फ्रॉम अलेक्जेंडर एंड डिबंकिंग एवरीबॉडी सो वन क्वेश्चन कम्स इन द माइंड बिफोर यू यू आई नो यू हैव स्पीक समथिंग वन क्वेश्चन कम्स इन दैट व्हेन वी टॉक अबाउट द द अलेक्जेंडर चंद्रगुप्त पीरियड एंड यू वेरी करेक्टली आइडेंटिफाइड that the real chandragupta maurya that we talk about is much earlier than what publicly people accept so what do you think of uh, buddha's period because buddha came after chandragupta maurya original the so what do you think about that so aditya ji uh, i had them uh, published some work on that also uh-huh. and uh, in my timeline and we'll discuss this again today Uh, is that we have a gap of about 650 years so things have been shifted by 650 years so if you go by that so then uh, we get the period of buddha and mahavir uh, about like 1200 uh, bc 1300 bc in that period so little bit later than what uh, you will get from the puranas like 1800 bc yes But, uh, yeah please go ahead with the presentation and then we'll continue in discussion sure so let's start uh, with uh, sharing yes uh, the presentation and while he is saying viewers do don't hit the subscribe button subscribe to our channel share it widely so you can see my presentation now I'll yes yes it, very clear very full clear. screen okay so uh, thanks to my listeners and thanks uh, adit ji so this uh, uh, presentation today uh, is the continuation uh, of the last presentation and this is part 2 of uh, figuring out uh, when did the imperial gupta era uh, begin and uh, so the as the background uh, we i just am i'm just uh, summarizing uh, what we discussed uh, in the last presentation and uh, so what we have right now uh, is that uh, the currently the zero point of uh, imperial gupta era uh, is fixed at 319 ce so basically we have the imperial guptas uh, in the 4th century and 5th century and uh, this is done by counting uh, from the 78 ce of for zero and uh, zero point of sun era uh, now in the last presentation uh, we discussed that in the alternative uh, chronology uh, in which the guptas uh, are contemporaries uh, of greeks uh, we have got uh, two feasible years uh, for the zero point uh, of imperial guptas Uh, we saw that uh, we had uh, from uh, based upon the work of uh, uh, sri kota venkatachalam uh, we get 309 bc and uh, based upon the text uh, smati tantra uh, we get 302 bc and uh, i was uh, i had done work in trying to figure out uh, which of uh, these uh, we should accept so to summarize uh, what is the evidence for 302 bc uh we discussed last uh, time uh, that it is based upon the evidence that is given uh, in smati tantra and uh, this book is the first book of astronomy uh, in nepal and uh, the reference is given at the bottom from which uh, i produced this and uh, so this uh, tells you about uh, uh, the time uh, say jato duryodhan raja so f- f- time of duryodhan and yudhishthir and then it continues 
and it gives you uh, the timing of uh, different errors. And if we summarize uh, from that verse uh, what it tells, so it tells you uh, that the Nand era started 2000 years after the Kali era, the Chandgupta era started 800 years after the Nand era, uh, the Sudrak era started 132 years after the Chandgupta era, and the Sak era started 247 years after the Sudrak era. And then it continues that the Mandev era started 498 years after the Sak era, and the Sumati Tans, the this text itself, uh, was written in the 304th year of the Mandev era. Now we know that the, the traditional uh, date of Kali uh, is 3102 BC, and we count from that, then the Nand era started in 1102 BC. So here we have uh, got this Nand and Maj around 1102 BC, and uh, from that we can calculate the date of Buddhas according to uh, this book. And then we have got the Chandgupta era started in 302 BC. And from that, it is clear uh, that this Chandgupta era has to be the Imperial Guptas because the Nandera is 800 years before that. So this is a very strong proof uh, in support of Guptas uh, being the contemporary of Alexander and the Greeks. And uh, then uh, we, uh, we are going to talk about uh, the evidence for 309 uh, BCE a start for Imperial Gupta era. And uh, this uh, I have got uh, uh, from the work by Sri uh, Kota Venkatachalam. And according to him, uh, the Sak era started uh, in 550 BC. And he has uh, spe specifically said uh, that uh, this is related to the reign of Cyrus the Great, the king uh, of Persia. So we are going to call this Cyrus Sak era uh, to separate it from the Salivahan Sakera that started in 78 C. Now, uh, this uh, uh, whole dating uh, of this Sakera and uh, this uh, is based upon the work of Barahmir. And uh, this is the verse that tells you about it. Uh, it's in the book uh, Brihat Sanita 13.3. And uh, so this is uh, the Sankir test, Asan Maghasu. Munya Sasti, a between Yudhishthira and Nirpata, Sad Dvit Panch Dvit Yuta, Sak Kalas, Tasya Rajasya. So you, you can separate it and it tells you the time, uh, a difference between Yudhishthira and the Saka king. And it tells you 6 uh, to Sad Dvit, or 6 to 5 and 2. And in Sanskrit, you have to read the number backward. So it will give you 2,526. So Cunningham uh, has translated it like this. He said the seven uh, seers were in Magha when King Yudhishthir ruled the earth. And the period of that king is 2,526 years before the Sak era. So what he is doing is he is calculating the date of Yudhishthir uh, starting from the Sak era going back 2,526 years. But the verse itself, uh, we can say that it's kind of ambiguous. So you can also uh, translate it uh, that the seven years were in Magha when King Yudhishthir ruled the earth, and 2,526 years from that king uh, is the Sak era. So it, 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 it's uh, both ways. So what is uh, this verse defining? That becomes the question. Is it defining the time of Yudhishthir, or is it defining the time of Sak? And uh, this is a very uh, important question uh, because uh, there will be no point to defining the time of Yudhishthira, which is very well established before the time of Varamir. So in fact, he is defining the time of the Saka king, uh, who he is introducing uh, to a place uh, where people don't uh, know about it. And this is uh, a very important question, which one is being defined? And uh, since the Cunningham defines it as uh, defining the time of Yudhishthir, uh, he takes 25, uh, 2,526 years before the Sak era, and this is uh, from 78 CE, if you go backwards, uh, then you get the time of Yudhishthir as 2,448 BC. So that's one of the timings of uh, Mahabharata uh, that the British uh, people have come to. But uh, we know that the traditional date is 3,102 BC, so, uh, and uh, 
that started uh, when Lord Krishna left this earth. And uh, since he was uh, the contemporary of Yudhisthira, we really uh, have a big contradiction that Yudhisthira cannot be really placed so many years later, like six, seven centuries later than that. So uh, if, uh, if it defines the uh, era of the Sak King, uh, then uh, we have a, a completely uh, different interpretation uh, for the same verse. Now, this gets interesting here, uh, is that we have got uh, 3102 year uh, BC uh, as the beginning of uh, the Kali era. And the time of the Yudhisthira era, that also uh, is given to us uh, to, uh, in our tradition, uh, is that uh, that begins 25 years later, because Yudhisthira uh, is supposed to have lived for 25 years after uh, the start of the Kali age. And uh, so the era of that is uh, defined by uh, his uh, death, his passing away, uh, comes to 3077 BC, that's 25 years after uh, 3102 BC. And uh, if we are going to count uh, 2526 years from that, uh, then we are going to get 551 BC at the date of the Sat era, uh, that's defined by Varami here. Uh, now we have got 551 BC and uh, Sri Venkata Chalam has taken it uh, as 550 BC uh, because uh, he takes the Yudhishthir era uh, to start in 3076 BC. So we have a, a basically one year difference, but uh, that could uh, come from like counting when uh, the era started, the actual month and all, that can give you one year difference. So if we count uh, now, so we consider uh, the era of the Saka King as 550 BC, and we take 241 years uh, from that to start for the Imperial Gupta era, uh, then we get 309 BC for this zero point of Imperial Gupta era. Now what has happened uh, is that uh, the historians, uh, they deny the existence of any other Saka era. They have only one uh, Saka era, uh, that is 78 C. And uh, so you see that, that we have a difference here about 628 years between 550 BC and 78 C. So if we have uh, the mention of uh, Saka era, and uh, then we have to really check uh, which one uh, it refers to. So there are many uh, Saka eras and uh, we uh, get to know of only one in the history because uh, they try to uh, kind of suppress uh, the alternative uh, point of view. Now, what we also have, uh, is that Brahmir himself uh, uh, has given uh, his timing. And if you uh, go to the Panch Siddhantika, that's another text uh, written by him. And uh, he says that he has written it in 427 Sakra. And uh, there is also the commentary uh, by Amraj. And he said that the Brahmir uh, passed away in 509 Sakra. And uh, this he has done uh, on a commentary on Khandak Khadya by Brahmur. So what we have here is that uh, what we are currently taught uh, is that uh, Varami wrote uh, this book Panch Siddhantika in 505 CE and he passed away in 587 CE. Uh, but if we use this uh, Sak era of 550 BC, uh, then we will find out that uh, he wrote this book uh, in 123 BC. So we assume that uh, was an adult at that time, but he was writing such a comprehensive book. And uh, then he passed away in 41 BC, if you use the Sakara of 550 BC. And uh, what uh, makes it very interesting uh, is uh, that uh, in this uh, alternative timeline, uh, he is alive in 57 BC. Now we also know uh, from our tradition that Varamihir was one of the nine gems. Uh, in the court of Emperor Vikramadit. And uh, his nine gems uh, also included uh, great Kavi, uh, great poet uh, Kalidas, and also uh, Amar Singh, uh, who is credited with writing the first uh, thesaurus. So very uh, eminent people. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the current history has placed them in all uh, different times. They are not uh, contemporary uh, in the what is accepted uh, in the history. Uh, they have put Kalidas uh, in Chandu uh, II's uh, time, 
uh, and they have put uh, Varamir in the sixth century. So they, they are not even contemporary. Uh, but our tradition uh, makes them contemporary. And uh, so we see that uh, uh, in this timeline, uh, we have got uh, really Varamir in 57 BC. And uh, that means that uh, we also uh, have a historical Vikmadit uh, who was ruling in 57 BC. Uh, uh, this is in contradiction to what the modern history books tell you, uh, that uh, there was no historical Vikmadit in 57 BC. And uh, uh, in the continuing presentations in the future, uh, I'll be talking about uh, the historical Vikmadit who was ruling in 57 BC. And in his court, Varamir, Kalidas, and Amarsin, uh, all these eminent people were there. So basically, if you look at the bigger picture, uh, is that uh, we have got uh, this Varam here uh, writing this uh, Panch Siddhantika. And based upon that, uh, people are claiming that uh, all the Indian astronomy uh, has been borrowed uh, from the Greeks and all that. But the name uh, Varam here itself, the second part of this name uh, is Mihir. And if you just go and search uh, for Mihir, you will find uh, thousands and thousands of people uh, in Iran having that uh, name Mihir. So basically, uh, this name Mihir uh, is uh, it comes from the Mitra. So it's a deformation uh, of Mitra. And that deformation has come when the Indian people uh, went, uh, ancient Indians went uh, from India uh, to Persia uh, and uh, further down uh, to, Euro to Europe. And that's how this all this linguistic uh, similarity has come in uh, based upon this, all this uh, Arjan uh, invasion theory uh, has been made. So what happens uh, is that that name tells you that Varamir was actually, I mean, Varamir was Indian, but his uh, ancestors, uh, they had come from Persia. And that's why he still had, had this name Varamir. And those are the people uh, who were worshippers of sun god. And uh, so when he, why would uh, they come to India? And uh, we have a basically a cause there uh, is the devastation uh, brought to, uh, to Persia uh, by Alexander. We can think that uh, in the aftermath of that invasion of Persia uh, and the destruction that followed, uh, many people uh, were uh, had to flee from there. So his uh, ancestors came to India after that, and uh, then they had settled for uh, some time. Uh, so his ancestors came. And uh, we also know that in our tradition, uh, these people, the people of Baram here, uh, they are called Sark Dvipi Brahman. So, and uh, also we have this uh, Sark Dvip, the Saka Dvip. Uh, the modern historians will tell you it was uh, in a different place, but uh, we uh, place them really uh, in Persia. In fact, uh, there is a place at the border of uh, uh, Iran, Afghanistan, and Pakistan uh, called Sistan. And this uh, Sistan uh, was actually uh, named earlier Sakastan, so that was the place of the Sakas, so from uh, where uh, he came, uh, his ancestors came. And that's why uh, he will introduce uh, an era that is based upon a Persian king, Cyrus the Great. So he uh, introduced uh, this era of 550 BC uh, in India, uh, for, uh, which is related to the uh, founding of this uh, Achaemenid Empire by Cyrus the Great in 550 BC. Now the question, uh, thing is uh, that he did uh, start it, but he did not become very popular uh, in India because the Indians uh, were too proud uh, of themselves. And you see that uh, uh, that shows through all the history and uh, all the way up to the Islamic invasion. And you see that uh, uh, in al Biruni's India, uh, we are told uh, about uh, ourselves that the Hindus believe that there is no country but theirs no nation like theirs, no king like theirs, no religion like theirs, no science like theirs. So they are extremely uh, proud people. Their haughtiness is such that if you tell them in, of any science or a scholar in Khurasan or, and Persis, they will think you to be both an ignoramus and a liar. So basically you see that uh, throughout uh, our history, uh, till the uh, Islamic invasion, our people were extremely proud of themselves because it was the most advanced civilization of the world, the most prosperous place in the world, and the, the best civilization in the world. Unfortunately, uh, we had to uh, go through uh, these invasions that uh, 
completely uh, destroyed uh, our wealth, and not only the wealth, but our self-confidence as well. So now we uh, come back uh, to uh, the original question of uh, uh, which one uh, should we take at, as the beginning of Imperial uh, Gupta era? Should it, uh, it be 302 BC or 309 BC? And on, for that one, uh, I found uh, uh, one piece of evidence uh, that kind of clarifies that. And uh, this is uh, in a paper uh, by Harry Falk, a very uh, well-known uh, Indologist, uh, right, has written really a great paper and uh, a lot of information uh, that is really against what is uh, uh, taught uh, by, to us by British historians. Uh, he has debunked many of them, uh, like the Ages era, uh, that British tried to uh, put in 57 BC and claim that it was Ages that uh, started the Vikram Sambha. So here uh, in this paper, uh, he gives uh, these uh, uh, this data that uh, we have got uh, these inscriptions in which uh, there are two dates. And you see that uh, for, Gumar, for Kumar Gupta, we have got the Gupta era date of 112, but also a date in an unknown era of five. And similar for, uh, for him, uh, for 121, uh, we have got a date of 15. So there's a, an unknown era date. And uh, for Chand Gupta, the, you see that the uh, either erased or not given, uh, for Chandgupta is erased, uh, but the unknown era date is given as 61. And then a monarch is not mentioned. Uh, his Gupta era date is not given, uh, but his unknown uh, era date is given as 70. So this is, uh, I found this a uh, very uh, interesting uh, piece of evidence. And we try to analyze that. So if we uh, take it uh, as the 309 BC for the Imperial uh, Gupta era, and then we go back uh, to this, what is mentioned here, say 112 and 121. So those uh, will then correspond to 197 BC and 188 BC. Now uh, for the other era, and that we know that uh, that has got only single digits. So what happened, uh, what has happened in our history that uh, we have got, let's say, Saptarsi era, uh, in which we have got a long number, but people just uh, drop the centuries and then just uh, count what is left. So if say if it's say, say 115, they will just write 15, or if it is 315, they will just write 15. So if they have dropped the centuries, and uh, could it be possible that uh, they dropped the centuries uh, that started from the Malavera? Now the Malavera is also very interesting uh, that we are going to discuss now. Uh, and uh, I have proposed that uh, this Malavera started in 702 BC. And if this continue, uh, if an era continues for many centuries and uh, people start dropping the centuries, then we are going to be uh, seeing the numbers that are uh, with the dropped centuries. Now, uh, this uh, Malavera gets very interesting. Uh, uh, if you read the history books, uh, they will tell you that there are three eras, the Vikram era, Krit era, and the Malavera. And all three are considered to be identical uh, with a starting date of 57 BC. But there is not really uh, any evidence that the Malavera is same as Vikram era. There are uh, uh, inscriptions of Krit and Malavera being the same, but there is none uh, that equate either of these uh, with the Vikram era. Now this uh, distinction is very important because we have got uh, inscriptions uh, of, that uh, talk about the Imperial Guptas, Kumar Gupta, and they give the dates uh, in the Malavera. So we have got uh, uh, these uh, two inscriptions, so you can consider them uh, as a continuation uh, that uh, talks about uh, the Kumar Gupta and uh, it gives the Malavera date instead of giving the Imperial Gupta date. And uh, both of these inscriptions, they are on a sun temple in the Mansour city. Now this uh, city in the Malav region of the Madhya Pradesh uh, in ancient times, uh, it was known uh, as Daspur. Uh, so the first uh, inscription, uh, is written when the temple was constructed. And the second one uh, was uh, when uh, it was repaired. So you can consider these two uh, inscriptions uh, as a continuation. And uh, if you uh, want to read uh, this uh, uh, whole uh, inscription, uh, you can uh, read this book by uh, J. Fleet. So this 
a corpus inscriptionum indicanum. So this has got uh, multiple volumes, uh, I think uh, nine volumes or so. And uh, it uh, got uh, uh, most of the inscriptions uh, uh, from different uh, times. Uh, they are compiled in here. So in this uh, third volume, uh, we have this. Uh, and this one tells you uh, that Kumar Gupta one was ruling uh, the world when a sun temple was built by the guild of silk weavers in the Malav era, Malav year. 493. And then in the continuation, it uh, gives you the inscription, uh, the Malavir 529. Uh, and then, so it is like what, uh, uh, 36 years after uh, the temple uh, needed repair. And it was again the guild of uh, silk weavers uh, who did, uh, who paid for these uh, repairs. Now, uh, if this 493 and 529 uh, and that these uh, refer to the imperial Guptas and whom we place, uh, let's say, the contemporary of Alexander and Seleucus, uh, then this Malavera uh, should begin uh, in the sometimes in the very late 8th century BC. Now, for that, uh, uh, we had uh, we have Sri Venkatachalam. Uh, he proposed the date of 725 BC uh, for the beginning of Malavera. And uh, this is his quote. I say they arbitrarily brought Malavgan era from 725 BC to 57 BC. And they had proclaimed that this was identical with the Vikram era or Ajas era. Then also we have uh, the work uh, by uh, late uh, Dr. Setna. Uh, again, I have uh, a great admiration for his work, a brilliant work. And uh, I uh, see my work as a kind of a continuation of the work uh, done by Dr. Setna. And uh, so he says, uh, that uh, counting from 315 BC as the accession date, option Gupta 1, uh, we get for the years 95 to 135 of Kumar Gupta 1, the rain period 220 to 180 BC. Uh, then to reach the starting point of Malavera, we may count 493 years backward uh, from 218 BC or 529 from 182 BC, and we arrive at 711 BC. So that's the, around the time period uh, you will need for the beginning of Malav Sampath. Now, we have got these two dates, 711 and 725, uh, but uh, there's not really any justification uh, given as to why uh, these years have to be uh, the starting point of the Malav era. Except that uh, we, uh, it has to be around in that time period uh, to be consistent uh, with these Malav uh, years given uh, in this uh, temple inscription. Now, I, I did a lot of thinking about that because this is a very uh, important uh, uh, piece of information that we need uh, to construct uh, our history. And uh, I've written a book also on that, just on this part, on the when the Malavera started. And uh, I have uh, uh, connected it uh, with uh, astronomy. And uh, you know that a lot of eras, they do come uh, from astronomy. And so I have proposed a date of 702 BC. Uh, I'll discuss again in the later presentations of why I think it's 702 BC uh, for the, the start of Malav Sambar. So if we assume that 702 uh, BC, and then uh, we come to 500 years later, so 202 BC, let's say. And uh, from there, if we count, uh, then we will get uh, uh, for the 309 BC, we, so now we have got uh, two counts, one uh, from say 309 BC, and the others will be like 302 BC or 202 BC, because uh, we are dropping the centuries uh, in that counting. So we have got, uh, let's say a difference of uh, 302 and 309, like a seven uh, year difference uh, between uh, these two uh, inscription dates. So, and uh, we can claim that. So if we do that, then we do see that uh, it matches uh, uh, with the imperial Gupta number uh, and the number in the unknown era. So it will match exactly with one and the other one, it will be different by one because in the inscription itself, it is uh, different. And you can uh, see that here, uh, that we have got 112 and five and you've got 121 and 15. So here we have only nine year difference, but here you have got a 10 year difference. And uh, that comes uh, because of uh, the different timing uh, these eras started uh, in the respective years. So what uh, happens uh, is that the uh, we have got the first two dates in the last columns refer to the centralian beginning of the Malavera, 
so in 302 BC, let's say, uh, and uh, we can count from that. And uh, if we take the 61 and 70 dates, then those uh, will refer to 241 BC and 232 BC. We are talking about uh, these two numbers, 61 and 70 here. So we'll, that will refer to 241 BC. And if we start counting uh, from the beginning of Gupta era uh, in the 309 BC, uh, then you get uh, these years will refer to 68 uh, and 77 uh, of the Imperial Gupta era. And uh, so that's what uh, we have got, 68 and 71. And uh, then uh, we can identify uh, who is the uh, emperor that has not been listed in the table. And for that, we'll need to construct the Gupta, uh, Imperial Gupta chronology. So that's what uh, I have done here. So in this one, uh, you say, uh, see here is that the current timeline. And uh, the data for that uh, is taken from uh, this paper uh, by Willis, uh, later Gupta history inscriptions. So this is the uh, full reference. And so these, we know uh, from the, uh, the inscriptions, uh, how many years each ruled and what was the timeline of the Imperial Guptas. And so we started with uh, Changup 1, and we get 1 to 31. And then in the, if we start from the first year of Changup 1, and then we continue like that from how the Gupta is numbered uh, their uh, years. And we get these numbers. And uh, when, uh, again, so these are then uh, counted from 319 CE. That's what the modern history does. And from that, you get the actual timeline uh, of the Imperial Guptas. So you see that uh, Chandu uh, one uh, was ruling from 319 to 350 CE. And likewise, we have got Kumar Gupta 1 uh, from 415 uh, to 447 CE and all. So this, you see that all these numbers, they come uh, by starting from 319. If we uh, see, if we start from 309 BC, uh, that uh, uh, we have now for Imperial Gupta era, uh, then we get these time periods uh, for these emperors. So we get Chandugupta 1 from 309 to 294 BC and the Kumar Gupta 1 uh, from 213 uh, to 173 BC. And likewise, we have the calculations. So if you match that uh, uh, from this chronology uh, table that I've given, uh, then we find that the unknown uh, imperial uh, monarch uh, in the table uh, will be Chengdu 2. And now uh, we have got uh, that uh, we're starting from 702 BC uh, for this Malav and Krit era. Uh, so we count 493 years and we get 209 BC. And so this is when uh, this uh, uh, Sun Temple uh, was constructed and it lists uh, Kumar Gupta 1 uh, as the ruling monarch. And we go, go to that table and uh, for Kumar Gupta 1, we see that uh, 209 BC, uh, he was ruling here it's between 213 and 173 uh, BC. Uh, but if we started uh, the Imperial Gupta era in 302 BC, <coughs> excuse me, uh, then the rule of Kumar Gupta one uh, will begin in 206 BC later and uh, not in uh, 209 BC. So we'll have a problem. So that's why uh, we see that uh, we have basis to select uh, 309 BC as the starting point of Imperial Gupta era. <coughs> so this also is the, uh, this also gives you uh, much valuable information uh, is the time of the repair that uh, Sun Temple uh, had to be repaired uh, in the 529 of this uh, Malav year, and that corresponds to 173 BC. And uh, if we go to the uh, table, the chronology table that uh, I have given, uh, you see that that's uh, the time about uh, when the rule of Kumar Gupta I uh, was ending. So that's a kind of a time of uh, turmoil in the Imperial Gupta era, and shortly after the Skandgupta takes over. So, but uh, we know about Skandgupta that uh, from his inscriptions uh, that uh, there was a lot of hardships uh, uh, when uh, he started, and uh, in the we have got the Bhitri uh, pillar inscription, and uh, we tells about uh, these turmoils and uh, Skandgupta even says that uh, he had to sleep on the ground uh, when uh, he had to face the invaders. He went and uh, fought the invaders and uh, uh, won against them. So that is the time period. So we see that, uh, uh, so just before that time period, uh, the, the rule uh, was weakening, the Imperial uh, Gupta rule under 
Kumar Gupta was uh, a kind of a very secky where there was uh, internal uprising and there were uh, invasions uh, from the Huns. And uh, so that gives you the background when the temple uh, fell into despair and uh, then uh, it was uh, uh, repaired. So basically uh, what happened uh, is that uh, Kumar Gupta one and uh, that we have talked about uh, is the Devanam Priya Priyadarshi uh, of the inscriptions. And uh, he was a new devotee, uh, a Buddhist, uh, became a Buddhist. And uh, he was uh, basically brainwashed that everything is nice. He has become a Buddhist and everything will be good. He's uh, sending uh, his uh, peace uh, missionaries all over the world. In fact, he's being told that uh, they've gone to Greece, they've gone to very far away places and they are spreading uh, their dharma there. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, but what happens uh, when you send uh, all these messages of peace, uh, they are not really uh, taken very nicely uh, by uh, the countries uh, that are uh, next to you. They see it as a sign of weakness and they think of attacking. So basically the rule has to be firm. Uh, it only comes from power, uh, not uh, from these uh, peace uh, overtures. So basically that's what uh, was happening. Uh, so that uh, Kumar Gupta was kind of lost in a make-believe world uh, while the barbarians were pounding at the gates and uh, his uh, whole empire was crumbling. Uh, that uh, had to be fixed by Asan Gupta. So that concludes my uh, presentation for today. I'd like to thank you, uh, Adit Ji, for giving this opportunity, uh, and uh, Dr. Manda Thakur and the Satology team uh, for organizing uh, this uh, talk. Thank you so much. Thank you. And, uh, uh, you know, the some important questions come in. Like you, I asked you in the beginning also, if you can summarize that what was the period to which Alexander Suppose Greek records claim to have come, and which king of India does it coincide with? Right. So what we have uh, in the Greek uh, uh, descriptions uh, is that when uh, Alexander came, uh, then uh, he met uh, Sandrocotus. So they define Sandrocotus uh, uh, as a person. Initially, uh, he was uh, uh, like he came to one of the military camps and then he ran away, uh, according to him, them. But later on, when the Megasthenes came, then Sandrocotus uh, was uh, ruling uh, over India. Uh, so Megasthenes made several visits during uh, his reign. So the only problem is that Sandrocotus uh, is itself uh, uh, cannot be taken as Changuk Mall because uh, we have got Changuk I also uh, as the founder of Imperial Gupta dynasty. And uh, nowhere in the Greek records we have saying that like, Sandrocotus Mall, so anything about Mall's. Uh, or even Chanakya is uh, completely uh, missing from the Greek records. So everything in the records uh, is uh, in favor of Changuktu one being the contemporary uh, of Alexander. The Vatican Church has called the, and also the allied academic institutions have called the entire Greek history as mythology. And, uh, and that's what it is being studied in Oxford also, that Greeks exaggerated a lot in their records. And, and there was no mention of time periods in any of the records. So for, for Greeks, land from west of Persia was all India. So even if they touched a part of uh, Afghanistan also, it will be India. <laughs> right, because, right. In, India was well known uh, to all the people. I mean, yes. some people think, think that the British gave us this uh, uh, country called India or the nation called India. This is so... Uh, ridiculous. I mean, mm -hmm. we have we go to the Puranas and uh, we have the mention of uh, Bharat, India, all the way uh, from the Himalayas to the Setu. Yeah, so but we, the... and uh, we had the east and the west boundaries, a little bit flexible, but the north and south was never uh, any doubt. Doubt, and also the like the entire Parsic was also called Indu, Indoi, mm -hmm. like by the Greeks, like the they mention of a city called uh, Herat. You know, which is in Afghanistan. And yes. they mentioned a city called under the big lake. Mm -hmm. So west of Turkey, under the big lake, also is India. Mm -hmm. So for them, uh, like he he could go as far as he could. And he said, we conquered India. 
So right, right. But even in their records, they say that they did not conquer India. He, he just got scared. Uh, got of scared. the fight of Sandokotas and just returned back. But we had and discussed I, before that he did not get scared and run back. He lost and that's why he, he has lost. to back. Attacked with 40,000 soldiers. He was stated by Porus and that's Porus. what these people have. And we did the two episodes, I think. On two that, episodes we did. How, yes. how he was completely routed by Porus. Yeah. And also the University of Moscow records, uh, they say very clearly that he attacked with 40,000 soldiers, went back with 500 and lost his life in Basra, Babylon. Exactly. That's a that's an Egyptian record. That's a, see, Egyptians did a good job of being very honest with the history. University of Cairo, you know, I consider it is one of the best universities in the world, at least from the historical records perspective. In fact, they are more honest than even Indian universities, more in history perspective. You know, Indian universities have done a good job in other aspects, but on the history side, University of Cairo is more credible because they they glorify India all over the place. As a land of culture, their history, they also say that many of the Egyptian eating habits come from India. So no doubt when the their president was made a Republic Day celebration and he was very humble. He was he looked like us. I thought he's yeah. from Punjab somewhere. There are lots of connections between India and Egypt that uh, have not been explored. Even not the cosmology explored. of what we have in the Vedas, it's similar in the depictions uh, uh, in the Egyptians. You know, uh, viewers should watch my video on the Egyptian connections to ancient Hindu connections. The latitude of Hastinapur is the same as the latitude of the Pyramid of Giza. What is the coincidence? Same latitude, 29 degrees. So, a straight line, like if you do a straight line, it's the same line, Pyramid of Giza and Hastinapur. And what's the possibility? Why this coincidence? And the and the people also have calculated that the latitude and uh, of and longitude of the position of Giza is the same number as the speed of light. I have no idea how did they come up with. So it's a, it's like a lot of things have very very similar to India, very similar to India. In fact, uh, Brahma Datta, Brahma Gupta, is uh, and Aryabhatiya, they are the first ones to bring in the concept of the speed of light. And and uh, and it coincides with the pyramid of Giza. So it was a mathematical wonder, also not just archaeological wonder, architectural wonder, but it's a mathematical wonder also. Uh, and also the 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 dimensions are square. Generally, the temples are square, uh, houses are rectangular, mm -hmm. and residences are rectangular. So when anything square means like Angkor Wat is a square territory, it's a square. Uh, most of our temples are square. Mm -hmm. Because uh, you go to any temple in the South India, where a lot of Vimanas are kept as Gopuram, uh, they are all square. Uh, the, because that's the Vastukala for the temple. Houses are not supposed to be square, as, as for what I understand. Uh, but people who are Vastu experts can correct me in the comments here. But uh, this is what uh, I, that's what I understand. Because in the Vastukala, in the book I have, in that it's by a German scholar, but Indic general scholar means uh, the person stayed in India and then came to Germany with the Vastu. Mostly the temple structures are square over there. Uh, so one more question comes in. Like, so the uh, imperial is a British word because these people were not there to snatch away the rights of the natives. So uh, when you talk about this Gupta period, Gupta, I won't say Gupta, but I say Gupta yes. period. Mm -hmm. uh, in the Gupta period, what was the level of science and technology according to you? See, the Gupta period uh, is the golden age uh, of uh, our civilization. So it, it was uh, very uh, advanced at that age. Uh, we already know that uh, they had a lot of uh, uh, gold coins are very good. Uh, you see that in the Gupta period. You see that also that uh, the amount of gold uh, in these uh, uh, coins, they change according to the uh, rulers. So that also tells you about uh, uh, what kind of uh, economic uh, decline uh, was setting in uh, during uh, the different rulers. Arjun? So uh, when we talk about India, uh, the so what was the like the original center of the Gupta period? Where exactly was the center? Excellent. So actually, 
uh, and we are going to again talk about in detail like uh, how things uh, change. So in, in my study, what I have found uh, is that the center was changing. So the Gupt, we know that the Gupt, uh, Imperial Gupt uh, kings, uh, they started from Bihar. So they started uh, from Magad. Uh, but as they went west, west, uh, westwards, when they started expanding, and they went uh, all the way, let's say, all the way to Afghanistan area uh, during the uh, Kumar Gupt times, uh, so this is from where the rule keeps changing. So from uh, Patliputra, uh, it went to Prayag. And then from Prayag, it uh, went to Kani Kuj. So these were three important centers. And these uh, places were changing. And that's why Megasthenes was confused about the location of Pelibotra, what he called Pelibotra, because he was going to different places. And he was thinking they are similar or same. And Kani Kuj, where is that? Exactly. So that will be uh, in Uttar Pradesh, uh, oh. exact area. Uh, will, I think it's uh, on the Kalindi River. So Kanikup is Kannauj. Yeah. Uh, in ancient times, it was called Kanikup. And there is a story about that also, how uh, it came uh, to be named Kanikup. Uh, but it, it was a, a place uh, where it was famous for perfumes. Even today. Even today. And that's why it is co- it was called Kusumpur. Kusumpur. The city of flowers. But people, mm-hmm. since they cannot differentiate, they think that Kusumpur was actually partly Putra. No, most of the Indians do not know. Like once you travel North America and South America, the land of India is very beautiful land. People don't know that. Like the all kinds of flowers come, all kinds of fruits come. And see, when I'm traveling all over the world, I just start appreciating India more. Like you have so much food available everywhere. The soil is so good. I mean, uh, unfortunately, Indians try to go to Switzerland for holidays and, and vacations, but they don't realize that the, the land of India is, is one of the best in the world. In the, in the world, not just in... Uh, I'm, not, I'm comparing with many countries. And uh, it's one Absolutely. of the best. And that's why we have uh, in the Puranas also uh, that when the gods, uh, like, you know, the, even the gods... Uh, uh, their time ends because you go to the uh, heaven or swarg based upon your good deeds. And when the, all those good deeds, all the fall is taken, then you have to come back to earth. And they want to come to India when they mm. have to come to take birth. I mean, the kind of uh, like morning you wake up and you, he- and you like, I smell the fragrance of the air. And, and so once you live in, like you live in Canada and I live in U.S., and we can appreciate more sometimes because we miss, you know, and we can appreciate Absolutely. more what is in India. And, and sometimes when I, and now the Indian economy is growing. So now the reverse migration will also start. So brain Absolutely. brain Absolutely. will be reversed now. So you know, it's beautiful land, the mountains, the, the landscape is amazing. Like every part of India landscape is amazing. That's, that's so true. And uh, you really get to appreciate that more uh, when you are not there. Because when you miss it, then re- you really, when you miss something, then you, re- you really appreciate what you have missed. When you are there with them, you don't. Yeah, especially when you travel a lot. Like when you tra- start traveling, then you see that there is nothing in that land which is not there in other parts of the world. If everything beautiful in other parts of the world is in India also, but much more beautiful. Like uh, some people, they really uh, tell me they visit Mexico and they say, what a beautiful landscape. I said, go to the interiors of Madhya Pradesh and Western Maharashtra or Southern Maharashtra or even you know, Bengal, you're from Bengal. Beautiful lakes everywhere, everywhere. Green and lush green lakes. Like when I was traveling through Ek Chakra and other way, places and I, and I was uh, going in a car, obviously, another... Uh, Vehicles, very beautiful, very green. You know, Bengal is green like anything. You know, the, it's beautiful. Yeah, go ahead, you're saying something. Yes, I. what I'm saying is that the land and everything, uh, but the most beautiful part uh, is the civilization. Civilization. Are, this is our ancient civilization uh, that makes us what we are. And that's what uh, we are trying to preserve. And a uh, lot of conflict in India is because this ancient civilization uh, there are a group of people who are trying to eradicate it. You know, the, the because currently there are so many problems with so many attacks on the Hindu civilization. 
so sometimes the people don't appreciate that once we start appreciating our civilization and culture probably we will have less time to think about the problems sometimes because the political problems will always be there and and we have to start also appreciating our land our culture and then sometimes these political problems will go away because they are not really they're taking away from the real attention which is the beautiful places uh, which is around us thank you so much dr raja ramon roy and thank you for the viewers for watching and you can also subscribe to our channel on spotify so you, we are on spotify you'll see all these talks you can listen to them at least 12 hours in advance all the shows are released there first now and then comes to the youtube if you want to see us speaking namaste thank you thank you namaste.